it feels like everyone wants the next big thing at the moment, like Nagelsmann from five years ago or something yeah. like that. And he yeah. should probably still be in with the shout as well, to be yeah. fair. He's only... Is he 36 or... No, he's 39 now, is he, or something like that, Nagelsmann? Mm. Like, did an incredible job at Bayern Munich, got f***ed off for Tuchel for no reason. I think they were in the quarters of the Champions League mm. when they f***ed them off and that, didn't they? Which was yeah. mental. So there's going to be managers like that who are going to be linked as well. But the standout, as you mentioned, is, is Xabi Alonso because of the job that he's doing at, at, at Bayer Leverkusen at the moment. Like, I mean, when you played with him, did you ever get an inkling of like who might continue in sport afterwards and be a manager, or did he ever come across like he would be a manager? Yeah, yeah, did I he, think yeah? so. Me and him used to speak about football a lot, and you could tell when he first came in, uh, he, he he got football. You got to re- the the reason me and him, I said I wouldn't say got football, but I always think there's a little thing. Players who lack pace, you've got to think about the game more. Mm. It makes you think you've got to get yourself out of situations. You've got to make sure you don't find yourself in certain situations. And Chabby was one of them. He, could, he, he couldn't run, but he was a thinker on the game. Obviously, you know, he was a great passer of the ball, but he was always thinking about the game. And I, I always remember that when he signed for us, he'd missed, he missed the first couple of games of the season. I'm just trying to think, was his first game at Bolton or did he come in after the Bolton game? We played away at Bolton early on under Rafa. Was it 1-0 with Fowler scoring? Was it that one? Or you got beat? No, Fowler wasn't playing. This is Rafa's first. I think he, that might have been his. Sorry. I don't know if it was Debbie, but I remember Rafa saying, and don't forget, Shabby was only 22. We've got this player coming, I think he's a fantastic player. Uh, he's already spoke about where he thinks the team can improve or the tactical things. And I'm reading this and thinking, who the fuck hell do you think he is? <laughs> 22 coming over from <laughs> Spain, telling us where we're going wrong. Look, let's see you in the share first. Uh, but he was he, he was that type. I mean, I used to speak a lot about this, you know, the Spanish team with him, and he, he was he wasn't really in the Spain team. It was hard for him to get into it initially because of obviously Xavi and Iniesta and people like that. So, so we used to speak a lot about football. So he was always someone who was interested in football. Did he watch a lot of football? You were known for yeah. watching everything, weren't you? Yeah, he did watch a lot of football, and I and I tell you why. I remember thinking, oh, he probably watches as much football as me, maybe more. I remember him at the time, uh, for- Nottingham Forest were in the championship when we were there, and they had a player called uh, Commons. He was a good midfield player, Chris Commons, I think his name. No, he was a good player for them. I remember him sort of saying he liked him and watched him. I was thinking, he's a player in the championship. You know, how was he sort of seeing that or whatever? And that always stuck in my head. Uh, within that, he, you know, he obviously watched it. A lot of football. I think his dad was his dad a manager or a, his dad was a player definitely, but I think his dad might have been a manager as well. So I think he was always going to. He was one of them. I think people looked at and think he's got his head screwed on. Did he ever come across like a leader? Because yeah. he, was, he was young when he was at Liverpool, yeah. wasn't he as well? So he wasn't someone who spoke that much on the pitch. He spoke a little bit, but I think it was more by example. He trained really well. Uh, he always played for the team. It wasn't about just showing how good he was. And he was always a, you know, a, a, you know, a thinker man's footballer, I'd say. I think a lot of people always felt I would become a manager, but I was also quite emotional on the pitch, you know, aggressive on the pitch, and he was probably a lot calmer. Really? Yeah. Oh, you, all right, would you, okay. you think that? Yeah. Uh, whereas <laughs> I actually think now, I think it is a big part of sort of being a manager now is not... You know, keeping your emotions in control. And listen, we well, let them man- out at the right places yeah. as well. We've probably got a manager who people will say was the opposite, but he I, knows when to use it exactly. And, and I think Jurgen, he gets emotion on the side of the pitch, but I think he doesn't get emotional in making his decisions. And that's what I go back to what I mentioned earlier is that Jurgen proves us wrong at times when we're all screaming and shouting for something. And he's a bit like he's a lot more level-headed. He's a lot more no, we don't need that. We've got him coming through. He's back from injury, it would be fine. We don't need a player in that position. He's not sort of like, well, let, let, let's buy loads of players. Uh, so I think he's very calm at the right moment, Jürgen. And I think Shabby, I don't really know too much as a manager. What Obviously, the, the three teams he's, he's managed. Uh, obviously, the youth team at Real Madrid, Real, uh, the Sociedad B, and now uh, by Leverkusen. I've watched them, but uh, so I haven't seen too many of his interviews, but only known his character. I can imagine he's he's very sort of cool, calm and collective. Does it when you look at like his career in the whole and now the job that he's doing over at Bayern and stuff, do you look at it and think, well, that's not a typically Spanish team? Because like I don't know, I get the sense that like when I watch watch Zabi and saw him for Real Madrid, that he'd probably be a little bit more ticky tacker, but he seems to have taken all the elements of all the leagues that he's played in 
and sort of does it feel like he's moulded them all together? Well, you think of the influences he's had, the leagues he's played in, but the influences he's probably had. If you think of like the best pep. sort of four or five managers of the last 10, 15, 20 years, he's, he's been managed by them, hasn't he? So that's a great influence. Uh, I, I, I do know Pep is his number one. I remember asking him what sort of about Pep and Jose, because almost like contrasting styles. And he loved Jose, but he just, he, he, he did, I remember when I was doing an interview with him sort of saying he just felt Pep, he just, Pep just had that little bit, whatever. And then looking at the stats, watching by Leverkusen play, it is more pep it's ball than probably yeah. Jürgen Klopp. Yeah. Really makes a lot of passes, short passes. So, uh, you know, if he was to come in, it probably the style would change slightly. But, you know, he knows what sort of Liverpool fans want and once that energy in the crowd gets going. If he was to become the manager, I, I think it, uh, you know, I think it would be a match made in heaven. But... I can't believe that Liverpool wouldn't want him mm. to replace Jürgen Klopp. I think the only thing is if, if, if Xabi Alonso wants to stay at Leverkusen, wants to take them into the Champions League, wants to feel like he'd need more experience. Because that is the one thing, he's, he's, he's in his first top, he's, he's 18 months in. I think someone said, you, I read somebody, he's basically managed 60 games or 60, 70 games at the top level. Which, in an ideal way, it's probably not what you'd want. But the situation that we, fi uh, we find ourselves in, where we find, or everybody finds themselves in terms of new managers on the scene, it is the standout candidate, but it doesn't mean he's going to be the Liverpool manager. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you, obviously, you, you know, you've done your research on him, of course, you have um, the Monday Night Footy segment showed that, but, like, it, it, do you think there's, what we're seeing in English football is evolving in terms of, like, obviously you've got Pep Guardiola's sides who have changed everything in the way that they play. I'm not even talking about the other stuff. It, what they do on the pitch is incredible. Obviously, Arteta looks like he's a very, very good coach. He's got them brilliant, one of the best defences in the league at the moment. So hard to play through and break down. Do you think, you know, most Liverpool may, might need with this to change and go a little bit more? We need to be able to just beat these low box sides all the time. And the way to do that isn't vertical, quick passing from deep to forward, which is what Jürgen Klopp's philosophy is. Is it a time where you think Liverpool can get better if they yeah. make the right appointments? I'm going to say this, I mean, we love, we don't win everything, do we? You know, I actually think this team should have won a lot more. I think we've been quite unlucky on last days of, you know, Premier Leagues or, or Champions League finals, but, you know, other managers do win things. You know, we've got to accept that. Uh, and I also think for the players who've been so used to Jürgen for so long, sometimes a slight change might be Great, you know, something different and a slightly new idea. And I think that would come in with whoever you bring in. Uh, so, no, I'm, I'm, I was devastated when the news came that morning. But the longer the day went on the next few days, I was thinking about it. I was almost a little bit excited about, well, I wonder what's new and, and what could come in and, and what could happen. Where could you take this team, really? So, yeah, it was a probably different emotions really through the day about you know when the news came through, but there's no reason why we can't get better. 